Hello folks! I'll be going over some useful tips when playing Genshin Impact. They will help out during your exploration, combat, artifact leveling, and wishing. I'm sure some of these will benefit you while running around in Dragonspine when patch 1.2 drops tomorrow. Let's start with traversal tips. My first one is bunny hopping. I'm sure most of you know this already, but I still want to show the advantages of this technique. This is faster than various dashing techniques and can even keep up your speed when you run out of stamina. Bunny hopping is best done with any of the male characters since their jump animation propels them forward. Just be in a running state, then start jumping. Time your next jump right as you touch the ground and repeat. It might take some practice, but this will let you retain your speed and momentum. If you time your jumps correctly, you can even keep up the speed while your stamina is at zero. I'm also comparing bunny hopping versus dashing. If you space out the dashes while you sprint, you will also move faster and use less stamina than a constant sprint. In addition to spacing out your dashes, you can dash twice with a character and then swap to another and dash twice again immediately. You can do this with all four characters before needing to stop since there's an internal cooldown. This dashing trick is very useful for the Ocean of Boss to avoid the Frog and Plump Blue Jay's death explosions. If you can avoid all the explosions, you get an achievement along with 5 Primo Gems. Tip number 2. Fast Swimming. I showed this technique a couple times during the food delivery event. This lets you swim at a fast pace and consume very little stamina. Just hold Sprint in the water. You will see the bottom right icon light up to indicate the Sprint button is held down. Now just tap forward in a rhythm. I time it with the splashes. Just make sure to tap it and not hold forward. You will see the stamina bar drain very slowly if done right. Tip number 3. Dashing off cliffs. If the cliff has a sharp corner on the ledge, then you can keep a lot of horizontal momentum when dashing off. This will let you traverse forward a lot faster than jumping off and gliding. Make sure to do a plunge attack or open your glider before hitting the ground. In these examples, you can see the ledge has a smooth corner and not a sharp one like earlier. If you dash off these, you end up following the curve and just go straight down. Tip number 4. If you find an empty Sealy pillar, you can use Elemental Sight to find the direction of the Sealy. This will help you get more chests, especially in new and unexplored areas. Tip number 5. Did you know you can get a unique 3 star sword in the game? Uh. Teleport to Li Wei Harbor and talk to Chen the Sharp. Ask him how the fishes are selling and he will give you the Dark Iron Sword. It's a sword that synergizes well with Electro characters. I currently don't know how to get additional copies of this sword, so you should lock it to be safe. Click the lock icon next to the name to prevent it from being used as enhancement material. Tip number 6. There are crystal chunk mining nodes that respawn every day in addition to the natural ones that respawn every 3 days. To locate the daily ones, talk to the blacksmiths in town. Each one will mark a different location with fresh mining nodes. There are 6 other NPCs that show you node locations, but only Draft in Springvale is close to a teleporter. The other 5 NPCs are pretty far away and not worth it. Note that the NPCs won't mark mining locations until 2 hours after the daily reset. You can also mine these nodes together with your friends or strangers in co-op and get more materials for everybody. Tip number 7. 
It's faster to grab items from the bottom than top. If you scroll to the last item then mash F, you look quicker than just pressing F from the top. I know items from domains will automatically enter your inventory after patch 1.2, but this still helps for world bosses and large groups of enemies. Tip number 8. Get your daily bird. Fowl is an ingredient to make cheap healing chickens, and you can grab a handful each day by visiting Timmy. Just bring along a Nemo MC and use their elemental burst on the bridge. Try to stand where I did to not scare the pigeons away. You can use the previous tip to pick up the items from the bottom up. Also, the birds do not spawn when it's raining. Tip number 9. There are several useful features in the settings. Under account, you can redeem codes directly instead of entering the code on a MiHoYo website. You can also change your keybinds. One of the new keybinds is to have a party member use their burst while swapping in. Just push left alt plus the member swap button. Another useful option is under other. You can turn off combat camera. This will stop the camera from lowering and changing angles to make the combat feel more cinematic. Here's a comparison with a boss fight. At first, I'm showing the combat camera being off. The camera angle won't change by itself. It will only rotate when I make it rotate and it's my preferred option. If I turn the combat camera on, the camera angle will change out its own. It will pan to the side to create a more cinematic experience. This whole clip with the wolf boss is me not touching the camera angle at all. It's automatically done by the camera setting. <laughs> Tip number 10. I've been showing this one in all my boss guides. The iframes or invincibility frames in your dash animation is super useful. It lets you stay next to enemies and keep uptime while avoiding damage. It just takes some practice. To avoid damage, start your dash when the enemy is about to hit you. If you time it correctly, the iframes from your dash will overlap with the damage frames from the attack, resulting in you not taking any damage. Tip number 11. When leveling artifacts, you sometimes get a 2 times or 5 times experience bonus. This is entirely random, but to take advantage of this, you should sell all your 1 star and 2 star artifacts. To sell them, go to your inventory and then the artifacts tab. Then select the trash can icon and start clicking. The more cost of leveling artifacts scales linearly with the experience, so you don't lose out efficiency when selling these artifacts. It just allows the 2 times and 5 times bonus to not go to waste. Also, while we're talking about artifact efficiency, it's better to keep artifacts at plus 16. The resource needed to go from plus 1 to plus 16 is about the same as going from 16 to 20. It's way more efficient to get another 16 levels on an artifact than to only get 4. So you should not rush the max artifacts to plus 20 early on. Only do so if you end up getting near perfect rolls. This way, you get a more powerful team instead of just a single strong unit. And my last tip is about the soft pity when wishing. We all know that you are guaranteed a 5 star within 90 pulls due to the pity system. But people have tested the gotcha rate. It's not actually 0.6% all the way to 90 pulls then jumping to 100%. There is actually a huge spike on your 75th pull and onwards. Here is the data collected by others showing what I relayed. Simply put, once you reach 65 pools or higher without getting a 5 star, only do single pools from that point onwards instead of 10 pools. This will drastically increase your chances of getting a 5 star before hitting 90 pools. To check out how many pools you have already done, go to your history tab and start counting. The pity on each banner is counted separately, so there are 3 different groups with their own soft pity. So those are my 12 main tips with some minor ones sprinkled in. I hope these will help you explore Dragonspine and beyond, especially the last tip on better summon rates and the soft pity system. Like, comment, and subscribe if you are up to it. I'll see you in my future boss guides for patch 1.2, and as always, have fun out there traveler.